faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound, this amazing stranger from the planet Krypton, the man of steel, Superman. Possessing remarkable physical strength, Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. think of the professor's show now? I still think it's pretty dangerous business. Hope nothing goes wrong. gentlemen, that the safety of the public is of special import to you. Perhaps almost as important to you as my ambitions are to me. But you request that I give up my experiments, experiments which are the combination of 30 years of dreaming and planning is impossible. Tonight, those dreams will become real. The comet of Falcon will be my toy. Under my control, it will be brought to within a mile of us. Then, after a close examination, I'll send it back again into space. Your tampering with nature endangers thousands of lives. Yes, and even at the possible cost of those lives, I shall continue my experiment. I warn you, Professor, we're prepared to stop you. And I warn you, sir, any interference may prove disastrous. Stop! to me, you meddling fools. Do you know that the power... Without that power, the comet is out of my control. The pull of gravity will bring it crashing to Earth any minute. Stop! Do you hear? Editor. Look, Chief, the panic's on. The thing's gone haywire. <coughs> Lois, Lois, what happened? Lois!
Miss Lane, the control. Superman, you were wonderful. <laughs> You're pretty wonderful yourself. Oh, how did you get here? <laughs> Thanks to Superman. That cartoon, <laughs> and I don't just mean the art. Although it I love does, me some Superman, stupid. I know, but I'm like so. Just just the artwork itself. Do you, do you get? Have, have any of you guys ever actually looked at a woman's face? Because it's like the men have relatively vague bodies, but their face has character. Yeah. But like the women, their bodies are lovingly portrayed, and then their face is like. Hail Lois Lane, Queen of the Potato People. Yeah, it's very it's like, potato. And then it's like it's like, okay, guys, I I realize it was like the thirties, but you can it's okay to look at a woman above her neckline. It's all right. <laughs> no one will shame you for it. So uh Glasses immediate turn off surely has no taste. I know. Yeah, it's potato. It's potato. Yes. Uh, so glad to see some more regulars back. Cryptid Rhea and Laughing Gremlin are with yes. us again. Welcome, welcome. Yay. Um, I'm assuming the uh, mic is at least decent. Um, what do you guys think, though? Too loud? Too quiet? Yeah, let us know what, what you've got going on, the, the sound for each of us. If your device is set to full volume, it should be a little too loud. That's what we're shooting for. But um, if it's set, if you've got to turn down a bit, we shouldn't be blowing out your ears. So yeah. uh, Mike's good. Mike is good. Glad Mike to hear it. Good. Thanks, Gremlin. Okay. All right. Uh, if anybody... Has conflicting opinions? Go ahead and throw them up there, and we'll we'll toggle. Absolutely, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have for a, everybody to yeah. We, we chime in. We run a very democratic microphone. <laughs> De I like that democratic microphone. Yeah, but but seriously, I mean, okay. So this is the only thing that's controlling the comet. The comet Matt. is now hurtling towards Earth. Yes. Quickly destroy it. Yeah. What the hell? Real brain trusts here. Yeah. I mean, if never... we destroy the thing, then the comet will just pump its brakes, turn around, and politely leave. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> meanwhile, the bad scientist, I'm like, so what's your hypothesis? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, what what control group are you using? So. My turn on the mic. Aristocracy. Yeah. Well, uh, for the low, low Patreon tier of five thousand dollars a month, no, that's no. not a tier. Yeah, Don't listen to that's, me. That's absurd. That, that's not a tier. I mean, but you know, I mean, it, but it could be. Oh God! <laughs> I've known people, uh, other YouTubers who <laughs> joke tiers of absurdly unreachable heights before, and they haven't generally reached them. But all the same, I don't. I, I I don't want to invite some absolute mad lad with more cash than sense. Yeah, of, of, is that you treat your savior? You are our Lord and Savior, our laughing savior. gremlin. Yes. We'll be sure to praise you properly at the end, but, of course. But even though you are our Lord and Savior, we are not going to stiff you for five thousand dollars. God no. Our, our kindness and gratitude has a limit. Also, so, uh, there's the, the the small issue with just handing the mic here. On the honorary fact of you being our savior is the laws of space and time. They kind of get in the way. I don't know, man. We don't, we don't five, have the ability to bend the fabric of reality to for five stick grand a, a month. Okay, for five, for five grand a month. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, uh, so um, improvised content went the way improvised content often does and we went derailing off into into la la land that's fun uh i did want to address something though a comment we got early on the stream from our laughing gremlin um yeah regarding the start time um i don't know how often this gets said during the show but in the descriptions of these streams 
Uh, we mentioned the pre-show usually kicks off around 12.50. Yeah. Um, and we try to get the show started around 1 a.m. officially. Yeah, but all, all times are approximate. Well, yeah, and, yeah. You know, the, we're Not personal generally... Savior. Yeah, and we'll start... Right, this. personal savior. Yeah, Who runs the circus? Savior. Officially Coyote, unofficially me. In true honesty, nobody I, really runs it successfully. Bold of you to assume that anyone is running anything around here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, but yeah, uh, um, yeah. Uh, I was giving the pre-show some thought, though, and that comment oh. brought the thought back again about about start time. But to be I'm <laughs> No, no worries. No, no, no. Not blaming you at all. I don't think we've made this clear enough during the actual shows, actually. Um, so I've been pondering start time a bit. It occurs to me, we start the cartoon at 12.50 for the stream and 10 minutes before... Approximately, yeah. Approximately. Uh, ten minutes before, approximately, when we start on Sundays as well, which is two, three, three fifty. Duh. Three. I, we've only four. been doing this how long? Four. four. What shit, 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 shit. Ah, ah. Anyway, ah. um, three fifty. It's about ten minutes before we start on Sundays, generally. Um, and then we usually start the show right when the cartoon ends, and that can vary when that is, uh, yeah. depending on how long the cartoon is. We've got six minute, eight minute, seven minute cartoons, um. So, the thought occurs, should we be starting it right when the cartoon gets done, or should we be starting it as cl closer to the dot? I don't really know. If we start closer to the dot, then either we're going to have airtime, that's blank. Oh, no. Or we're only going to show part of a follow-up cartoon, and then fade into the actual program. Well, I could set it up so we've got the one cartoon that always plays and then it randomly starts another one and we just know the second one's not going to run the whole time. Well, yeah, but then everyone's going to, to just go crazy trying to figure out how the cartoon ends. Oh my gosh, you're right. We can't do that to people, man. Well, I mean, I we, think we probably could. we should have a poll or something about this on the channel. That's an idea. We have the technology now. And while I've been going back and forth pondering the ponderables about start time... We have very successfully managed to not start for the last five minutes, so... So, okay, we should probably do things... Okay, so Gremlin says, blank air bad, half cartoon bad too. Okay, well, so, that that's one opinion. Um, yeah. I'll probably phrase one it, of the... It's poll, a savior uh, opinion. Options. It is. But, but it's a, it is an opinion a... that carries a little bit more weight. No offense to all of our other beautiful viewers. But, you know, patrons. Yeah, patrons, they get the golden chairs at the round table. Yeah. That's, that's the way things be. But, alright, so let's see which one of these is A. Okay, here we go. A button located, Isaac's trap only partially shut, let's go. <laughs> oh man, I I Ooh. love so much about this game. I, I, I well, know because... Look at those pretty Sailor Scouts. I know, right? Like, I, I know that the, the idea with Travis's motel is it's supposed to look like pretty shitty living. It's like, oh man, look at this loser. He's just got a, a 4x3 TV, a wall full of figurines, a cat, he lives alone. But I'm like, he's kind of living the life, actually. Uh, I kind of want a place like Travis's, where it's just me, a kitty, and my, my, and my TV, and my anime figurines. I think that could be pretty baller. Yeah. I'm Everyone, I think, should... Yay, Janine! Everyone, I uh, think. Gremlin says, time. "Votes keep doing the way things are." Um, I hope that you will keep an eye out for that poll when I get around to it and cast the vote officially, so your opinion can be reflected in front of the masses. Yeah, I I want to have some part of. It. Yeah, right. I think everyone should have some time in their life, just living alone. I've been daydreaming about having my own place, and not too the, dissimilar uh, to Travis's lately. And the, I think that having a year or so of relative quiet uh, just is really good for the soul. Yeah. And, you know, some people just want to do that forever, and some people don't. Wait, how do I back up? That's not back up. If you guys hear thudding, that's the cat who's batting at something. Yeah, I I have a variety. I like things that jingle and hang and make noise, and so uh, I have a bunch of stuff around that's kind of default cat toys. Yep. So he likes the things that jingle, jangle, jingle. I do. I have. I have. I wear bells. They jingle. Oh, bro! I just realized there's no sound in the game. 
There was no sound in the game. Oh, holy crap. Yeah. Um, okay. The only way to fix that is to do a full restart. Hang on. Let me, let me pull over. Pull over, and I will do the thing I do. So just wait yes. one minute. Everybody hold on to your socks. I for, I neglect, neglected to check this because you were in a real rush when I got back from my horrible, soul-crushing day job, which is actually not that bad. Well, I'm glad it only crushes your soul a little. Just a little. Just a just, little. Just merely the, the minimum amount of soul crush necessary. Yeah, I mean, it's a job. Basically, the worst it gets is me thinking, fuck, I could be doing so many more interesting things right now. Um, it's not actively hostile. It's pretty chill. I like it. Uh, okay, so that should be that thoroughly taken care of. Uh, Yay, thorough. Like it gums at the soul. <laughs> that is perfect. It gums, it gums at, the soul. at the soul. I like that. And then if you have a job you really love, it doesn't gum at the soul so much as it nibbles and licks. Oh, God. Okay, we're not going there tonight. <laughs> uh, okay. Suda51, baby. Yeah. <laughs> You know, that actually is an interesting point. Suda51, Suda with some of his later works, stuff like Shadows of the Damned, stuff like Lollipop Chainsaw, he came to be known for really, really sexual, risque, wink-wink, nudge-nudge stuff. I'm too late already there. Um, and No More <laughs> Heroes obviously has some some tasteful and not-so-tasteful sex jokes. I mean, the way you recharge your beam katana is a sex joke. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, there's that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Travis is not tasteful, but the humor around him is. Yeah, generally, generally it is. Yeah. Um, but Shadow Shadows of the Damned and Lollipop Chainsaw, and I forget what the other game was that came later. Um, really shove that stuff into the forefront, where the pervy sex jokes are more prevalent than some of the. If you'll forgive me using the word deep themes that tend to embody a lot of Suda 51's work. Yeah, Stuff that you see in the silver case. In other words... Goes deep. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> um, stuff that you see in, like, the silver case, which we've been yeah. streaming on Sundays. Coyote has. I'm not there, but I think it's better without me, honestly, because it's a really cozy... Um... Ah! Not that. It's not that. That's not what the silver case stream is, but oh. it feels like an audiobook. It's really good. Um, but anyway... The silver case, where like half the time it's insightful and says something trademark, and then half the time it's incomprehensible fucking gibberish. That's the suit of fifty one that I love the most. Oh, you've got two stuff things to check out. Uh, that blue waypoint, mm -hmm. that is where you can purchase bean katana upgrades, and the kanjis that I don't know how to read is where you can do training to increase your stats. So you'll want to check out both of those. Mm, yes. Gremlin is getting far too dirty at the chat. <laughs> Deeper, harder, twist it. Okay, uh, twist it. <laughs> Bop it. Twist it. Pull it. You I know, like, for kids. I like the noise that guy made when he ran over. Anyhow, I was theoretically I was grasping uh, at a that, larger point. That was disorienting. But uh, okay, yeah, I finally got to confirm we do have game audio. I'm sure you guys noticed. But anyway, um. Suda 51's work kind of got consumed by the sex jokes. And it, people knew him as the weird sex joke video game guy when he was just the weird pseudo philosophical video game guy before. Suda, the pseudo uh, philosophical guy. Um, and he, he, I say pseudo, but he does make some interesting arguments and raise some interesting points about society trademark. It's pretty cool, it's pretty based. <laughs> What does that mean, anyway, to be based? Um, to be based, it, as I understand it. It used to mean to be established on the foundation of something. Absolutely not that. To be based is essentially to be edgy and against the grain in a way that's not performative. You're just raw and you're authentic as hell and you aren't influenced by outside sources. You know, you're, you're real, you're authentic... That's, that's based. And generally, based is also, I say edgy, because it's also authentic in a way that will probably piss somebody off. How do I jump? What? No. Oh, no, you just called your, your bike. You're on the wrong side of this entire clump of buildings. You need to be around on the other side of, the, of uh, 
Yeah, take hop on the bike, go left and circle around until you're on the... Oh, turn around, I mean. Because it... Your bike was angled the reverse direction that I thought it was, so just bang a Yui here, drive up this way, and then left around that corner here. You can disobey traffic laws, it doesn't matter. Yeah, just for left. some reason, I, my bike suddenly stopped, but it's not one. Okay, you're looking for a small opening in this concrete wall, there it is on your left. Ah. Yeah, you have to enter from this weird kind of parking garage area. That's where you can get uh, it. okay. Anyhow, um... Suda 51 didn't have a whole lot of creative control over Shadows of the Damned. In fact, that's the one that he will not let go, which I don't blame him for, where he had to rewrite and rewrite and rewrite what he wanted the game to be like six or seven times before publisher Capcom finally let him go through with it. Oh, my name's Citizen. Yeah, that's right. Gremlin remembered the gag. Hurrah. Oh, man, your back must be killing you. Yeah. That oh, tends to be the... You poor woman. Th th that tends to be the commonality between all women with well-endowed chests is hard on your back. It really is. Yeah. All right, well, that's the next beam katana, the, the uh, Tsubaki. You definitely want that, but it is prohibitively expensive at the moment. Mm, only 98,000... Uh, what, what are they called? Low bucks? Um, LB. LB. 98,000 pounds. It's definitely closer to being yen than it is to being dollars with, with the amounts. But the uh, accelerator there can locate buried treasure when attached to the Pendle Beam Katana. Hmm. Not as useful as it sounds, but you do occasionally get a couple bucks here and there. So it doesn't exactly pay for itself in a hurry. Ooh, no. I would not recommend getting it for a while unless you got the extra cash to burn. Um, it looks like I don't have any... Yeah, I've you got 86,000. 86, so that would be 29,000. That's almost a third of what you've got. Or this is 98. So actually I'm close to getting a katana upgrade if I want to just save up for that. I recommend saving up for the, for the Tsubaki. It, yeah. It's what you want. Um, man, the story behind Shadows of the Damned is rough. Um, Capcom famously quoted to Suda51, if you can't summarize the entire plot of your game in one sentence, it's a bad plot. Oh. You need to start over. Oh, you heartless, motherless. So they made him go back and forth and back and forth until finally what he settled on is, fuck it. Um, Demon Hunter goes to hell to save his girlfriend. And Capcom said, okay, we'll print that. So, yeah, he had to leave so much on the cutting room floor that he wanted to do with that. And I played a fair chunk of Shadows of the Damned. It's got Suda charm, but it also has entirely too much of the sex jokes, because those were kind of pushed in there from a variety of directions up at Capcom. He got to work with the director of Resident Evil and a film director that he really likes that I forgot... Uh, let me check the of uh, the film director. So it was a worthwhile experience to work with people he really admired, but it was not the project he wanted it to be, not by a, uh, a long shot. Yeah, I mean, what good it, what good is it to be able to work with George Lucas if you don't get to do anything that the people involved really want to do? Rage. Ah, the gem. I want to say he worked with with James Gunn. I know. That's the name you that comes to my head. I don't even know right? if that's a real director. Hold on. Oh yeah. I don't do that. I don't do movies much. You want to do that? Uh, I and I was about to say subtitles maybe, and then here we are, etched on toilet paper. Come over here. I'll teach you a little something. Take off your clothes. Off! Off! We can't get away from it. It's 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 just baked in now. Need your clothes off to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wanna start? Get naked. Now stick your butt out. Out! Hold still. 
Can't kill no one unless you have a strong stance. Yeah, this guy's weird. No, not your arms, your hips. I'm sitting here trying to do uh, research here. Hold out your hands, stick out your tush, hands on your hips, give them a push. Yeah, she, You'll be she, she, surprised she, she, you're doing the French mistake. Voila! <laughs> oh, you're on the bounce. Off! Oh, I was completely buried by the gag, but um, I found the name of Resident Evil's director who did, I just confirmed, did work on Shadows of the Damned with Suda51, Shinji Mikami. Um, there was not the film director in question. I think it was that, uh, what, the reason why I was thinking of James Gunn is that they cited him as an influence. Yeah, yeah, they cited him as an influence on the project. He didn't actually work on it. And James Gunn is, in fact, a director that exists, so I did remember a director. Aha! Yeah, this part was motion was gesture controls on the Wii, and it was actually pretty fun because if you wanted to fully do the exercises that Travis was while doing the gestures, then you could, and I usually did. It was pretty fun. That's awesome. We're not playing a motion-enabled version of this title for a couple of reasons. Capturing it's no problem, but actually being in a, a space where we could record safely while waving the remotes around is not something we can do right now. Yeah. You know, I just think it's kind of cool that I, instead of just... <laughs> oh yeah, in, in, instead Cryptid of Gia's latest comment either... um, apparently was filtered out of the top chat, but is in the all live chat section. Even when uh, the word ass is censored in the comment, YouTube still filters it. But yeah, exactly. Uh, the doubts are for the cast if he says for you to strip and then make sure your ass is clean. That's very, very uh, dangerous. Aiming to increase, quote unquote, strength. Ha! Damn it, was unfiltered. Ha. Well done, YouTube. Well done. You're doing such a great job. By the way, anyone who has more knowledge than I who might be in the chat, feel free to correct me, but looking into it, match A, it seemed that uh, it is impossible for even the live streamer in question to control the automatic filtering of the live chat. You can't just turn it off or curtail it to filter some stuff and not other stuff. You apparently have no fucking control over that, which is stupid. Because adults use this platform. Adults stream on this platform. We should be allowed to say fuck in the live chat and not have it goddamn censored. I mean, I don't care if we have to flag the video with a little, uh, you know, adults only age of consent thing in order for the live chat to be unfiltered. I... I think that would be a trade-off worth considering. Alright, you did all your training. Fantastic. Uh, be yep. sure to come back here after every ranked fight from now on, because there'll be a new round of, tra round of training after every opponent. Splendid. I also, I just, I think it's really cool that they have it so that you're actually doing something to represent your character's training. Yeah, this is also an idea that was carried over into No More Heroes 2 to a far worse degree. <laughs> uh, no More Heroes 2 was really enthusiastic <laughs> excuse me, about these 8-bit minigames that they made to both represent some of the side jobs you can do. Like, instead of collecting coconuts in a 3D environment as Travis, you played 8-bit minigame where Travis collects coconuts, for example. Um... Well, they also had 8-bit minigames replace the training minigames. Two of them are tolerable. One of them is so frustrating that even I, uh, a very famous, very successful video game boy, That's really, why. really struggle to max out strength in No More Heroes 2. To the point where the la my last playthrough, I just said, fuck it, I'm going to clear the last few ranked fights two levels away from max strength because this sucks that much. Damn. Which, if No More Heroes goes the way that I think it will, 
We'll probably eventually do No More Heroes 2. Oh, probably, yeah. So, if you end up struggling really, really hard with the strength training and weighing or not, weighing whether or not it's even worth rounding off, I've been there. And it's okay to say, screw it, I'm not doing all of this. So yeah, uh, you came to the right place, because new ranked fight means new part-time jobs to check out as well. Hooray. And completing part-time jobs unlocks more killing count contracts, and these are not only more profitable than the part-time jobs, they're way more fun. Generally, you only need to do one of each of the side jobs to unlock the killing contracts, and then farm the killing contracts for money. Excellent, because I did not enjoy collecting coconuts. You probably will never need to collect coconuts again. Good. Third, Third class man? Uh, no. First class man. I'll voice this guy this time. I have not mastered the secret of the first class yet. It's not too bad. The first rated god will give a hard working man a little smile. What does that mean? Today's job has been listed on the bulletin board. You sad, strange little man! So that's Coconut Collector, that's number one. Okay. When you go down, you can check number two, and that one is Lawn Mowing. Looking for lawn mowers. The lawn mowing one is one of the more tolerable of the side jobs in this game. I find it perfectly fine. The side jobs in No More Heroes 3 are actually, all of them, really fun, except, oh, except for the mining one. That one sucks ass all. But except for the mining one, they're all fun. The mining one's at least fun once or twice, but the later levels are just bullshit. Um, no More Heroes 2 has some really fun... Um, 8 bit mini game side jobs, but also some bad ones. And as I mentioned, the 8 bit strength building mini game in No More Heroes 2 is infuriatingly difficult. Also frustrating in No More Heroes 2, you don't have easily farmable killing contracts. Um, killing contracts show up just sporadically here and there as revenge missions, and they don't yield that much cash, and you can't replay them. Oh, that's a bummer. So, in No More Heroes 2, you go from... You only have to do one side, each side job once, and then complete the corresponding kill contracts. Oh, that's the high school. Yeah. That'll be relevant later. Yeah. Anyway, this is um... Forward. Whee! In No More Heroes 2, you have to farm specifically the side jobs. Fortunately, most of them are more fun than the ones in 1. Yeah, the, uh, the thing is, anytime that you're doing a sequel, it's not that you're in a no-win situation, but you're in a very, you're in a very gambly situation, because people are going to want more of the same, but they don't want exactly more of the same, so you have to try new things, and that's always a risk. You have to keep some of the same stuff in there, but the context will change, and that's also a risk. So you're always rolling dice. Yeah. Unless you want to just do a, a rehash, like a summer movie, which, mercifully, so far as I can tell, Suda51 has never done. Yeah, Suda51 doesn't do a sequel unless he has something new to say, and he always tries very new things every time. Not all of them work. He got a lot of uh, negative feedback for the drab, mostly pointless open world of No More Heroes 1, but instead of improving that open world for No More Heroes 2, it was completely cut. Now, I do want to mention, when it comes to No More Heroes 2, Suda51 directed the story and wrote the entire story, but he was not lead designer. He was much more hands-off of the second one due to... I believe it was schedule conflicts. He had a lot less to do with the actual game design side of uh, 2 than 1. When he was back in the director's chair full-on for No More Heroes 3, the result, in my humble opinion, is the best Suda51 game ever made. And definitely the best No More Heroes game. So good. Like, if you... Oh, oh, you're gonna need to get the hell away from that tree. If you even just like No More Heroes 1, then you will really, really like No More Heroes 3. And I love No More Heroes 1, so No More Heroes 3 was a blast. Just don't what go around the tree, stay on the inside of the trees. 
Okay, I thought I was supposed to mow all the grass. Mow as much of the grass as you can. The acres counter, you just want to make that number go up. Oh, okay. You can miss some, you just need to mow as much as you can. Um, in No More Heroes 3, you pretty much need to mow everything. Also, you can still get all of the grass without colliding with the trees and slamming into their overlong hitboxes. They are very overlong hitboxes. It's not you on that one, it's just... There's a gigantic gap where you could easily fit, but the tree's hitbox just says no. Another fun thing in No More Heroes 3 with a lawn mowing is you can go frickin' like turbo mode while lawn mowing intermittently, which is neat. The lawn mowing is just next level in 3. I didn't like uh, the trash pickup as much in 3. Although, it wasn't exactly a showstopper in 1. It was at least more in, more engaging in 3. All the side jobs in 3 are really engaging, even if I do not care for the later levels of the mining one, as I mentioned. The combat in No More Heroes 3 just never gets old, though. I When I played No More Heroes 3, I saw as much content as there was to see, basically, which meant doing a lot of repeat missions and uh, farming stuff. And it never got boring. And I did way, 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 way more than you ever need to do to just beat the game. So a super cash playthrough, I can't imagine that getting monotonous. 91 acres. I think the max you can get is 100. So yep, that's gold. Sweet. And gold is as good as you can get in terms of your rank, so well done. And see, one of the advantages in the way they've set up the side jobs in this game is that if you're stuck doing uh, summer jobs, you know, chores, or, or you know, you're on, um, oh, what do they call it? It's not probation, it's community service. Community service, yeah. Yeah, uh, you can just fantasize that you're actually an assassin, and you're just building up enough cash that you can get your yeah. first job. Hey, you third raider, I've got another job for you. Something a little shadier, perhaps, but work all the same. I've sent an introduction ticket on to my associates. The road to becoming a first raider is long and hard. Get your ass in gear! You do realize I kill people, right? That's like my thing. New assassination mission. A brand new free fight mission. Yeah, the free fight missions are just scattered around the map, and they're completely optional. They don't yield much cash. I think the main draw for them is primarily bragging rights. It's more profitable to just redo the stuff at K Entertainment, but Hello, uh, the free fights won't... Uh, they'll still let you some cash. That's what I was trying to say. Travis, yeah, I'm not feeling my best today. Welcome. Here's a list of jobs you can do on your next rank. Oh, goody! Pizza Bud. Did I that. did that. Snake Hall. Didn't do that. Kill Till You Die. Mission ends when your life runs out. There are two newer ones as well. I I really don't want to just kill a bunch of snakes, you know? You're not killing snakes, you're killing dudes. Oh, okay, Let's that's alright then. Strangely. Okay, what's number three? Kill using wrestling moves only. No other moves are allowed. That's fun. Just a, a string of wrestling moves. Ah. Well, four... Go on a batting killing spree. That's just the the, the swing bat a bat a mini game, and that's the entire thing. Would you? Okay. I believe you never hit a ball. I never did. So. I mean, on the one hand, I could use the practice. On the other hand, how much do people really want to, want to watch me just whiff a hundred <laughs> times? Whiff, 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 whiff. Strike one, two, three, you're out. Strike one, two, three, you're out. Strike one, two, three, you're out. That reminds me, the batting cage in Persona 5 is, is <laughs> strangely fun. I barely touched it my first two playthroughs of the game. Uh, yeah, Snake Hall, I think, is your best, most straightforward one. Yeah, I think Just I'm going go to kill. Snake Hall. May you find, yeah. May you find your true path. Every time I play this game, because I do play it so, so, so much, um... I typically like to do every kill contract at least once and then pick my favorites that I farm, but you are under no obligation to do all of them. If any of them just uh, don't appeal or you try them and, they, and they're extremely frustrating, you don't need to do them all. It's fine. Ah, uh, Bugs Bunny. I missed the Bugs Bunny reference. Uh, 
Um, you probably quoted him. I probably guess. did. I'm just, I'm doing so much stream of consciousness right now because I'm so terrible at switch tasking. I couldn't tell you what the reference was. <laughs> Dang. You've got Which is a very unusual state for me to be in, but... You've got major streamer's blindness. Yeah, basically. I mean, normally I, all of my concentration is towards what other people are saying, what am I saying, what is the context, and now I'm like, I'm trying to play a video game while I'm talking and listening and all this stuff, and I'm just, I'm dropping concepts right and left, and they're just, they're littering the ground and getting kind of crunchy on the underfoot like used Doritos, so. Oh, the one, two, three strikes thing, yeah, that was it. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah. Classic cartoons, that was a good one. Hey, cool, the parking lot again. Parking garage, I mean. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't feel super. Oh. All right. I just kind of want to collapse, but I'm, I'm good for now. All right, well, as long as you're good for now, we'll keep going a little while longer. Yeah. I don't remember what any of the controls are. Oh. How do I uh... attack again? I, I think I, I attack with. I think it's the X button yeah, for low the, attack and Y button for high attack. That makes sense. Yeah, the and then one. A button for low melee and I, I mean, yeah, low.